Hello and welcome to the stream of chaos. My name is Dave and I will be your keeper of arcane lore for this session of Call of Cthulhu. Uh, today we are continuing our playthrough of Regency Cthulhu uh, and you can get your own copy of this book from chaosium.com. Uh, you can find all of our VODs collected over on the Chaosium YouTube channel and we do stream live each Friday at 3pm Pacific on Twitch. Except for in like a week when time zones happen again and I could not tell you what time we will be live. Less said the better. The less said the better. 10 a.m. Australia. 10 a.m. Melbourne time. That's when, uh, Just type when that into North your computer. When North America swaps time, we will be playing at their 4 p.m. I don't know what it is in Europe. Please don't at me. <laughs> and when we move in about a month, it will be America's 5 p.m. And work Pacific. at a global company. I do this twice every year. It's time. <laughs> the trick is no one knows, and it gets randomly decided every year when it happens and how it happens. When the council makes their choice. <laughs> the I feel like... Shadow council. I feel like it is an eldritch tome, and I have as much understanding as a human mind can of the eldritch monstrosity that is time zones. But yes, no one can if really... If you understand it understand any that. further, you will go totally, totally mad. Um, I want to give a quick thank you to Roll20 and Sirenscape for being tools to use to improve our game. And I also want to uh, call out that uh, Graveyards of Arkham is ongoing. We had our, what was it, third episode on Thursday slash Wednesday uh, slash Friday slash whenever the hell it happened recently. Uh, and that'll be up on the uh, YouTube channel soon. And we've got three more episodes to go and it's only going to get more that. So uh, definitely check that out on Twitch and on YouTube. Uh, and also recently, as in, gosh, it was, I think, I think yesterday, uh, Arkham is out now. So that's the, the source book for the, like, the setting, the big one, the one with all the, the witches and things happening. That's out. So uh, definitely go and check that out. You can find that on chaosium.com as well. Uh, all right. I think that covers, I think that's all our ducks in a row. Um, without further ado, let's return to merry old England. Uh, where a very pleasant summer ball has slowly uh, gotten worse. Uh, so we uh, find our, our four investigators after a evening that is sort of rolling on into night, uh, scouring the grounds for a monster that appears to have invaded the party, uh, done with a cat, and then fled off into the night once more. Uh, one of the hosts for the party... Uh, the young lady Elizabeth, uh, Miss Elizabeth Northlake is missing, as well as George Potter, young gentleman uh, who is also in attendance. Uh, two of our investigators have strode through the long <laughs> corridor uh, to go outside and try, yes, to go outside and try and find them. Uh, no, I'm shaking my head because you didn't have the courage to do what you said with the YouTube videos. My problem videos is I always long... remember it when I do the bit and then I forget about it immediately. You can edit the titles, Dave. I dare you. It's if an I, image. I, it's it, an image file. I can't do it right now. Oh, but you can change the YouTube like video title. I can change the YouTube video file. that's what you were talking about. No, no, no. I was thinking I thought, like, up here about. on the, um, in the... Like the overlay, oh, I wanted to make it like start like just going oh, off the edge. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> yeah, well, oh, it well. would have been great if I'd done it. Any of these episodes. <laughs> Reupload <laughs> still... for the bit. <laughs> yeah. And no, we're you gonna no. Let's retake it. Let's start again from the first yeah. episode. All right. All right, you guys are going to a party. <laughs> no. Excuse me, I have, I have, I gotta go. <laughs> I mean, everything that we, everything that we do is scripted, so it's not like we can't just read those lines again. Yeah, that's I don't right. think there is anyone out there who believes what we do is good. Back to <laughs> page not one. An accusation I have heard. No. <laughs> uh, uh, it, it's, it's usually a suggestion. <laughs> We'd love a little. Just tighten the editing. <laughs> uh, um, uh, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so two two of our investigators have strode off in search of a monster. Another investigator has gone to speak with Lord Northlake and try and legitimize the whole affair. And our fourth and final investigator has decided to take a little jaunt between worlds as she has found a slip in reality. And by stepping sideways in the long corridor has begun to feel the cold brush of some other place begin to wrap around her arm. Uh, we'll do a hurdle around and reintroduce our investigators in that context. Uh, Jim, heads up, we'll probably introduce you last because you you've got the most, the most interesting, most daring. Is he? Yeah, that's it. Uh, we'll start off with Art. Hi, I'm Art. Uh, I am playing the, the the good and sad uh, Reverend Samuel Jennings, 
um, who is, I think, both, like... I'm just going to say, I think Samuel Jennings might at this point be the dad friend, because uh, I mm. think he is the oldest of everyone, and is just, like, very, very, like, tiredly trying to keep this herd of cats ungutted. <laughs> I think that's a, that's a good... Yeah. It's a good uh, combination of circumstances. Just un, un cats unraked, as it were. <laughs> um, not hurting them. You can't do that. But you no. can try and keep them with all of their innards in the one place. Um, so is trying to is is on his way to try and find uh, Lord Northlake, who he's somewhat familiar with, um, to yeah try and. Uh, try and get at least some legitimacy to what is going on. And also, I think, has a genuine, as we've said many times, uh, genuinely cares about the people of his congregation, so does have a genuine concern about uh, things that might be happening to the family that is, uh, you know, unpleasant for them, difficult for them, etc., etc. Um, that's me. I, that's I you. I need more coffee before I can be more articulate than that. No, we'll take it. Hey, for for lack of coffee, that's that was pretty good. Uh, we'll hurdle across now to Jackson. Hey, I'm Jackson. I'm playing Captain John Stone, who's here back from the war, but uh, not all of him. Um, he's done a terrible job of integrating himself into society, yes. having lost almost uh, enough reputation to be censured because they don't. The, the rules are not the same at a at a at a two <laughs> at a at a at a, at a to do as they are in the battlefield. Um, no one told him that before he got here, and he's not doing Hardly a good job. But all he needs to do to get that reputation back is find the monster that is stalking the yard and killing cats before uh, anyone else, in parentheses, gets killed. Um, and that'll be fine. That's yeah. the plan. So he has got uh, his rifle, thanks to a stroke of luck, and he's got a lantern, and he's ready to go a monster hunting. And off a monster hunting, he will go. He only needs a companion. Speaking of which, we'll introduce Alex. Hi, I'm Alex. I'm playing Miss Emma Wentworth, the excitable younger sister, um, who has been excited about several things this evening, uh, the most pressing of which is her childhood friend, Miss Elizabeth Northlake, uh, being in the firing line for some kind of ritual generation spanning murder plot i don't know it's all very exciting <laughs> um and critically emma has the lantern thank you very much the captain does not have the lantern that's emma fair. is electing to accompany the captain with her lantern that's right the rifle needs two hands that's a that's a good point very much appreciated exactly. it does yeah you're welcome uh and as the two of you step out into the darkness it is the elder sister that is left behind to explore the long corridor and i'll pass across to jim that's right i am jim i am playing uh miss georgiana wentworth and as a sensible older sister the second i saw a hole between dimensions i stepped right into it <laughs> and uh i'm really excited to find out what's there <laughs> <laughs> yeah go for a little go for a little jaunt Terrific. Uh, so uh, we'll we'll step across to Art first, uh, as you seek out Reverend, uh, not Reverend North, like Lord North. Like, can't be a Reverend Lord. That doesn't make sense. This scenario does have a lot of characters. This has a lot of characters. Uh, How both many of those NPCs words. did you say that you were prepping, Dave? Was it something like I don't know, eighteen off the top of your head? Yeah, it's it's like yeah, there's there's two digits in there. Uh, it's a lot. F's um, in chat for Dave and his preparation for this one shot. We've <laughs> done it before. If, if you haven't seen uh, the first episode of Time to Harvest, we're all kind of on a school bus and he introduced the entire one. kind of university level. That was very well done. And he deserves yeah. props yeah. for that as well. So many that accents. One. That was a good one. Good time. Um, all right. Uh, we'll, we'll cast across to uh, Reverend Jennings as you seek out Lord Northlake. So, um,. With the others heading out towards the long corridor, you turn back into the party and begin to move through it. You can see clear signs of the staff definitely more active than... Pre like, there's a buzz in the hive. They're beginning to move throughout the area. 
definitely counting heads, beginning to kind of get a sense of things. They're still fulfilling duties like, you know, doling out drinks and keeping people fed. This is still a party first and foremost, and there is an attempt to get the atmosphere back towards, you know, fun after the screaming and everything. And people are sort of gossiping in groups and beginning to move around. Um, but as you're aware that they're doing a, a head count, you can clearly see that happening. Uh, Lord Northlake has sequestered himself in the main parlor, uh, and he's currently meeting with uh, his wife uh, and uh, the other reverend, uh, Reverend Byron Choke, who is um, uh, speaking with the two. There is no formal guard posted in front of the door, but it's clear that this is a private conversation um, as they sort of move to the rear of the room and they're standing around a table. Uh, the two men speaking uh, to one another and uh, the Lady Northlake is looking... She's more aware of people coming and going. She's got an eye on the door and does seem to be a little bit nervous. Um, Zoom probably due to her daughter still not having made an appearance. Um, how would you like to go about getting an introduction? I did flag that, because uh, Miss Georgiana, the, the other three were like, oh, we'll try and get a meeting when we can. I kind of said like, yeah, you've got one when it happens. So I think you've expressed interest, kind of your collective party and hey, we'd love to have a word when you get a beat. So it's not out of the ordinary to just step up and say, g'day. Um, I think the... Because of the little uh, interaction that I had with the Lady Lydia at the beginning of the party, uh, where it is, you know, we established it at least to some extent. Um, I am known to the family and and maybe not considered like a friend, but certainly considered like an acquaintance yeah. um, with, uh, you know, some standing in the region because of what I do for a living. Overall, yep. Um, Sorry, not actually. The phrasing for the time would be for my living, because um, we've that's that's how how people used to say what it was that they did. My oh, living yeah. is I am a reverend. Um, ye oldie English, fun times. <laughs> so I think I would like to sort of be at the door and try and catch if I can see Lady Lydia is is paying attention. Try to catch her eye. And give a small, like, you know, bow or nod or whatever the appropriate, like, quiet, quiet, I am here and I would like to speak with you, but I do not wish to interrupt and I am going to stay, like, a appropriate distance away so that you can either say, come in or come to speak to me at the door and then say, like, this is private, no. Yeah. Um, in all manner, in all, in all aspects... I have a reasonable enough reputation at the moment and I plan to keep it because someone has to in this godforsaken town. There's a respect for the um, reputation of the time. Also, like, again, the whole point of this character is he cares and it's very hard to be perceived to care about people if your reputation's in the toilet. So I'm going to do my best uh, to, to be... Uh, to have propriety in all situations. Um, and if we can just kind of take that as blanket so that I don't have to waffle about yeah. propriety every time I step into a situation, that'd be grand. Very pro-propriety, we got it. Um, so yeah, you you step forward to the, the entrance and make yourself politely known. Uh, the two men continue talking for a moment and uh, Lady Lydia catching her eye excuses herself and glides across the, the whole the, the uh, length of the room towards you. As she approaches, she pauses briefly, and you can see her make eye contact with one of the staff members that's just behind you, and an almost imperceptible shake of the head. Um, she nods towards it, and then the staff member returns to uh, canvassing the area, and she uh, looks towards you. Um, even before she speaks, and without any role needed, you can tell that she's distracted, uh, but she is putting on a uh, not only a brave face, but also like a host face, um, and if it weren't for your familiarity with her and your insights into the problems currently persisting, uh, you would think that she was just checking in on you and making sure that the party was going well. She uh, sort of quite politely takes your hand, pats it and says, and how have you found the dancing so far, Reverend Jennings? Have you had a chance to uh, take a tour of the ballroom? 
I have, Lady Lydia, thank you so much. Uh, unfortunately, I am still in possession of two left feet alone and no other, but I <laughs> hope I didn't embarrass myself too much at your wonderful, uh, wonderful party. No, I'm thank sure you. not. I am ever so grateful that you're here as well, and I'm certain that there's a fair few um, of the ladies who'd love to uh, experience your two left feet for themselves. You are too kind, madam. Speaking of ladies, I n have not seen uh, Miss Northlake in a few moments, and um, Madam, I, I hope you don't mind if I speak a little plainly in this moment. Uh, I just came from the library where uh, the Dowager Lady Northlake had a bit of a turn. In, uh as you say, as you say this, she will just, she doesn't stop you, but she sort of gasps a little bit, takes your hand, and just takes you three steps into the room. Just I am drawing, speaking softly. And it sort of draws that invisible curtain across you as well, where people are far too polite to try and listen in on this. Um, and now you're definitely speaking uh, quietly. As you talk, you can also now begin to get uh, hear what the other two are talking about. Um, Lord Northlake is speaking with Reverend Choke, who is currently on a... You hear him murmur something about the devil and its corruption, and he's doing a lot of, like, gripping his staff and shaking it slightly. Lord Northlake looks fairly... There's a, there's a like, storm clouds in his eyes. You know, he looks fairly... Mm. Not angry, but... Definitely swept with emotion. Um, but the two of you can continue speaking, and all of this is kind of a separate conversation happening that is so far not being open to the two of you. That's reasonable. I will say, uh, whether it is mechanically relevant or not, I do have quite a good listen. So uh, if there are things that I can sort of pick up from that conversation, I don't think I am actively trying to, like, you know, listen. I am just a good listener. 100%. Um, Might do a retroactive listen roll. Uh, once the conversation falls. Um, so essentially, I'll, you know, I'll say, um, Madam, I understand from the lady, uh, the, the Dowager Lady Northlake, um, that there has been something troubling is, has, has occurred in this family's past. Um, and that, try, I'm trying to remember what, essentially I want to kind of lay down to her, um, that I am aware that there's something in the past that was troubling to the family, mm -hmm. and that potentially there was something in the past that has caused... I don't necessarily want to go so far as to say risk to the family, but something to that extent, um, you know, uh, and in, like, again, sort of s position myself in a way where I'm not necessarily saying that, like, your family is cursed, but I'm like, your family, there's something happening and I would like to help you. Okay. Because I am both your religious leader to some extent and also, I am an acquaintance who considers you in quite high regard. I would not ever go so far as to say that we are friends, because that is not appropriate for the station, but essentially I am saying to them, you may see me how you wish, I would like to consider... You may consider me a friend. Yeah. I will consider you lord and lady, but you may consider me in this moment a friend. Um, and intimate to the best of my ability that this goes no further than me no matter what yeah. they decide um in that like if they're like nope everything's fine i will accept that and and no one will hear rumors from me why they would i'm a reverend yeah. um to to kind of like suggest anything um i wish to help and i wish to do so in a way that does not impact the party does not impact society i just wish to yeah you're just you're just trying to do it's a fairly delicate it is a delicate um 
point to make. Um, any suggestion that even things are wrong with the party is already pushing it buttons to then suggest that uh, Miss Elizabeth may be in trouble and then to go so far as to say that the family going even backwards may have troubles is something that must be delicately done. And uh, uh, the Reverend does have that ability. I'm going to ask for a skill roll here. And failure here, unless it's a fumble, is more finding no delicate way to put it and on sensing resistance stepping back. If you push it is when you're going to be really risking um, things getting a little hairy. Uh, so I'd probably ask for... I would take either I'm... charm or persuasion, I suspect. Uh, both of those, uh, but that's fine. I was going to say, I do have the etiquette skill. Yep. Would this come into play in this moment? The etiquette, so... it's... You've kind of crossed the etiquette hurdle a few times with these particular members, and you know the etiquette is what's letting you kind of get through this conversation ultimately this comes down to a more personable thing um so a social skill basically persuasion or charm is going to actually bring home the, the, the... i will go with persuasion because i am not charming but mm -hmm. I, I am good with words Let's see what i roll right what is I'm your what is your reputation off. presently as well 53 Okay, so not quite enough to be in the in the bonus dice category. No. Uh, I think that's at 60 that you bring that. Being as a well-to-do folk. Uh, so, as you begin to talk about this, <laughs> Lady uh, Lydia is somewhat resistant to the suggestions that things are wrong. She's clearly concerned, but at the moment, she doesn't need to hear any more about it. When you begin to talk about the family's history, first of all, it's her husband's family that the thread goes up and she will give a very polite, you know, well. All families know, have ghost all, stories and skeletons in the closet kind of thing. All families have rumors. You best not take them any mind. Now doesn't, now hardly feels the time for superstition. Uh, and then she even like, she'll even like, kind of like a little bit cheekily be like, I think my husband's getting more than enough of that at the moment as the reverend, the other reverend slams the, you know, staff down once more and makes another <laughs> point. Um, you could luck this, or you could push the roll if you wanted to try and um, push the matter further. You could also... Gonna... There is also the kind of golden bullet of mentioning that you have concrete information that Lady... that Miss Elizabeth is not in the house. Do we have concrete information that she's not You've done, yeah, Miss Emma has done a canvas and is almost... Uh, sorry. Miss Emma is certain that uh, Miss Elizabeth and... George Potter are not in the house. Now, you don't have, like, proof, but this is kind of a, po a time when, like, someone's word and what they've said... Like, if Miss Emma said, like... And, Alex, you did, I believe, right? Mm. You shared that. You said, like, yeah, she's not mm -hmm. here. Yeah, Miss Emma said it, so certainly. I just did a... I just went looking for her. She's not here, and yeah. this is the situation. And you're certain. You're like, I know this place. It was when we were young. She she will have gone mm -hmm. to the gardens if she wanted to be, to be somewhere alone. So here's a thing. You've already said that saying that Miss uh, Elizabeth is missing would cause quite a to-do. Saying Miss Elizabeth is not present and a young man is also missing would create a different kind of to-do, but would. one that would not result in a large search party and, if anything, would result in a much Quieter Very good party. point. Yes, and I think it would. It would also probably cut because the 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 concept <laughs> of like clever. something out there, like a monster, that was really just the Dowager Lady and Captain Stone retrieved the the, the corpse, and I believe still has it. Um, oh, did you pass it? Like you pass it? Did you pass it along to some staff members to take to Lord? Yeah, Northland? I think it's the cat. Yeah. yeah, I think it's okay. in the kitchen or in like the. I mean, kitchen. You the. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. In that, um, yeah, in that case, I think, like, I will, I will, like, if she's, like, the family history or whatever, I'll back away from that, because I don't think that is, that is going to help at all, uh, and, and I think, like, that definitely was more attack that maybe Nord Lord Northlake would have been a bit more receptive to, because he's the one, we're also in a time where men keep plenty of secrets from their wives, he probably was like, don't even worry about it, honey. It's not a thing you need to worry yeah. about, but he knows how difficult it is. Um, 
I think I am at this point going to just say, of course, you know, madam, um, what I would like to let you know, um, as, as you know, I mentioned that uh, Miss Elizabeth does, does not seem to be present. Um, again, being, being very careful to in no way insinuate, I believe she is in any way in the wrong or has done anything, but I will say that um, I have it on the word of of uh the uh M miss emma wentworth or miss wentworth um that <clears throat> miss elizabeth seems to not be in the main areas for the party and uh mr pottington has also not been seen in a, a few months like you know in a little while um and would they're both it, missing like, Yes, madam. So she's uh, not perhaps missing so much as just have not been seen at the party. I do not wish to cause alarm. I do wish to bring this to your attention as a well, as as a host. No. Yes. Yes. Implied as a mother. <laughs> um, no, that's... And and offer again if if I, <laughs> with your leave, madam, I would like to help um, locate one or both of the parties to ensure that everyone is uh, brought back together to have a a enjoyable and um, whatever like socially appropriate I'm looking for like the word to just kind of again be like I am a yeah. reverend I care about the health of the souls of everyone here I've noticed a young lady and a young man seem to be missing can I help? <laughs> I, I like it. You're going in. It's proper reverend. You're going in. And you're like keep a foot for God. <laughs> what the hell do they think I, they're doing? Like, with, again, with the, with hopefully with the intent of being like this is not a like very clearly. I am not making a judgment on the like the propriety of your daughter. I care about it the health of the souls of everyone, okay, and if is... anything, like, the propriety of a gentleman could be in question in this moment, but never the young lady, you know, For sure. that, that Absolutely. kind of thing. It's, it's still, but you're definitely leaning more into that space than that there's a monster and they'll get eaten. Um, as you, as you bring this up, she immediately shoots up, and she will, cover. She, they're, they're together then, missing, um, where is the Miss Emma Wentworth? I'd like to speak with her. Would you fetch her for me, Reverend? Um, but of course, madam, I, I understand that, uh, that, um, Miss Wentworth was planning to have a look in the gardens to see if, uh, Miss Elizabeth had, uh, led, had gone in that direction the and the good captain had, um, offered to accompany her. With me, please, Reverend. Um, she steps across to her husband and Reverend Choke and she says, James, uh, Miss Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth is, is outside. She was with George Potterton, they think. Uh, Miss Emma Wentworth saw them leaving, or, or suspects that they may be together. Um, we, we need to we need to go and find them uh, as soon as possible. And uh, so Lord North like takes her arm and says, "If they're together, then at least they'll they'll come back soon. Perhaps they've just taken a turn in the garden." Is all, Reverend. Thank you for bringing this to me, Miss Wentworth. When did she see them leave? Miss Wentworth uh, did not see either of them leave. She just intimated that she had not seen either of them for some time. They do not appear to be in the house, and so the garden seemed the logical next place to see if either of them were there. I cannot say for certain, sir, that they were seen together, only that they have both not been seen in the house for some time. Lady Olivia turns inwards towards her husband and says, Perhaps your mother, it's what she saw, and he goes, Perhaps. We're going to go and look for them now. Um, best to keep this between us for the moment, Reverend Jennings. Uh, Captain Stone has raised concerns that there may be a beast wandering outside, and we'd like folks to stay inside as much as possible. Best not to arrange too large a search party, but um, a few of the staff members, myself as well. And uh, where is the captain? Uh, the captain, as I said, Emma Went uh, Miss Emma Wentworth was planning to look in the garden for her friend, and the captain uh, kindly offered to accompany her to ensure her safety. Of course. Uh, and to ensure that she is, you know, comfortable in the night air. So yes. if I, if I may offer my assistance 
in any capacity in this matter, I, I would be happy to accompany you. Should that be uh, your, uh, should that be appropriate? Um, or I understand that this uh, this this party is very important and, and it should remain seen as a as a beacon of uh, of joy and um, pleasantry. If I may in any way step in so that you may provide, uh, that you may stay in the house with the guests, please uh, let me know, or if I may accompany you, I, I would, I would like to offer my assistance, sir. Um, as you do, Reverend Choke harumphs and says, I think you've offered quite enough already, member of your parish? With uh, wandering outside and in nights like this, I think rather perhaps you stay inside, Reverend Jennings, and uh, enjoy the parlor for a time. Uh, Lord North Petlow like pays him no mind, thanks you again, and says, um, "Yes, uh, would you go and fetch your uh, the Captain Stone and, and and Miss Wentworth? Find them and and bring them inside. We'll coordinate a more thorough research. I'll fetch some of the staff members, have them find lanterns, and and we'll." canvas the area concretely. Best not to make this a to-do, but if they're found, the sooner the better. Of course, uh, Sir, Sir James. But, um, one last thing that, that I just want to um, mention to you, sir, is uh, like very clearly, even though I did hear the aside between the two of them, the, pro pro the proper thing to do is to pretend I absolutely did not hear that mm -hmm. and in no way reference it. So to just say, I, I was I, I was in attendance when your, uh, your good uh, mother uh, took a bit of a, a turn. Um, she was comforted by your uh, family Bible um, and was uh, kind enough to uh, walk me through a few of the pages as she calmed down. Just want to leave it at that, but I fully want to be like, I have seen your family Bible. Do you want to make Just a, leaving that there. Do you want to make a psychology roll for me, please? Sure. Apparently I cannot do anything this morning, so no. It's one of those. Um, just just one of those where I have a 50-50 shot and we're going to see the other side of the coin. He, he's, okay. he says, yes, I heard. Um... Uh, I heard from Mrs. Coombs. Thank you for tending to her. She's resting well now. Uh, Glad to hear. The good doctor, I believe, gave her a, a, a small sedative, so if she seems a little harder to wake than usual, I, I believe, if you have not already been informed, sir, that, that it was the, the tonic of choice. She's comfortable and in bed. Now, if you would fetch the Captain Stone and Miss Wentworth as quickly as you might, uh, that would be much appreciated. We'll be here still. I'll fetch some of the staff members, and as soon as you're returned, we'll take in the garden. Um, and with the failed psychology, basically, he doesn't seem to focus on the Bible too much. He focuses on your assistant. It, it, you don't get an immediate visceral, like, I secrets, no, the, you know? It, yeah, it wasn't necessarily to evoke a visceral, but to be like, again, without without repeating myself in front of the lady, because I have already said that, and it would, like, it's just going to make things worse to be like, I'm saying the same thing again in front of your husband, uh, to yeah. sort of try and intimate to him, like, I am somewhat aware, but if if he's not picking up what I put down... That's fine. Or he doesn't, or he doesn't, he either doesn't know or doesn't engage with it. But either way, it does not seem to be a super high priority. There um, is generally this thing that they haven't necessarily put those those things together. Um, with the permission of Lord North, like, I will go and find the other two to essentially say to them, we are being given permission to go look. Uh, we will be potentially accompanied with some staff, but we can make this, like, we don't have to sneak. We will be allowed to go and 100%. do this. Um, and at least, like, Okay. You know, we do not risk any further like impropriety by buggering off ourselves. So I will go and try and find the other two before they disappear out the door to the garden to say, hold one moment. Timing wise, they have already made their departure. So we will see where they are as you now turn uh, back into the party, make your way through and head towards the uh, the small parlor and onwards to the long corridor. Um, There, we currently return to... Uh, a rather strange scene that is unfolding. Um, first, we need to check with uh, James and Miss Georgiana, who at the end of the last session, with an extreme success, paused, balancing on one leg, 
and found that a strange glint in the side of your left eye cast almost a slice, a crack, through the corridor's uh, um, wall, and through it peered a strange black space with faint glimmering that came from it and a cold wind that rushed along. You found that if you could hold your balance and carefully cast yourself sideways, you could begin to almost slip through this crack and into another world. Um, how are you proceeding? There's I, there's no hesitation. There's not even a, I should let someone know what I'm doing. I'm just, I just, I see it. I turn my head and I, uh, maybe I make just enough noise that the others hear me for, you know, narrative, keep the party together purposes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, under my breath to myself uh, as I try to, yeah, just kind of reach in towards the light. Fantastic. Um, you cast one hand and as it begins to move through, you can feel this like cold wash beginning to run over it, up your arm, and then cross over to the other as it seizes your chest and sort of wraps around your heart and uh, organs to send a, a chill mm. down your spine, but you're able to complete this balance and then sliding almost as if through slips in paper, um, you begin to tumble through the wall and into a space on the other side. That small gasp you let out is enough to alert Captain Stone and Miss Emma, who, just getting towards the doorway, you're in sort of inspecting the frame and noticing that there were locks on the outside that would have um, sealed the long corridor from the gardens. Um, you turn around, and Miss Emma, you see your sister basically sliding almost strangely towards the wall and vanishing as if there was a gap there that forced perspective did not permit you to see and then beginning to tumble through and into the space beyond your eyes catch for just a moment before she slips out of sight Jim? I, I, I... A point of context very quickly. Do we... Is is the place where I tumble, is it approximately where we put the chalk marking, which we have sort of put as, like, the centre of it's, the flux in my mind? That's right, yes. Right, that cool. is right. Yeah. Uh, your eyes, your eyes catch for just a second, and then uh, you will vanish. Mm, I'm going. I'm following. I, that's my sister, and she just disappeared into the wall, and I'm going. Okay, racing back towards it. I care about Elizabeth. I care about my sister, but I'm going. I'm, yeah. Captain Stone? Uh... Uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, Miss Wentworth, uh, uh, where, where, what? Georgiana? And, and I'm going. So Captain Stone stalls for a moment, uh, peer, like, trying to sort of, like, uh, comprehend what's happening as Miss Emma races back towards the spot where her sister disappeared. Just as you arrive, skidding on the carpeting and sort of push your hands up against the edge is as Miss Georgiana slips through and just the trail of her fingers vanishes around. It's as if she's stepped, you know, a long, <laughs> a long corridor and there's like a door frame in it so that you can't see and it looks as though it connects on the other side. And then when you get there, you expect to find that gap where the doorway is, but there's nothing there and there's no sign of Miss Wentworth. <laughs> If you want to inspect the area, you can make a spot hidden roll with a bonus dice now as you uh, very carefully search the area where you know that she vanished. Okay. I'm blocking that one, obviously. You will, need, you will need an extreme success to find that I'm flagging now. Um, oh, wow. I mean... Otherwise, you think you know where she went. Yeah, look, I'm doing it. Okay. I have 40 luck. I have 40, okay. well, I had 40 luck. I don't anymore. Okay. Well, I could join you and have a roll as well. I you... want to go find my sister. Okay. This All is right. important. Um, Captain Stone, go ahead and give me a spot hidden roll as well as shaking yourself from this sort of uh, stupor. 45. Nah. You oh. stomp after, and I think uh, Miss, em uh, Miss Emma then... As you find it, it takes you a moment to catch it, and you're sort of like running your hand along it until you realize that touch isn't going to find it. And even sort of, you know, relying on sight alone, it's it's a forced perspective thing. It's as if a magic eye. You need to sort of unfocus. And as you're staring at this lavish painting of sort of the countryside, sheep beginning to move down low hills, and in the distance, a, a bright and brilliant sun painted uh in the corner uh you begin to sort of focus looking past it and it's almost as if you can see twinkling stars in the day painted sky and then focusing in further twisting your head slightly you can see black cracks beginning to shift along it and then so you take a minute shift and suddenly it's as if the world shears 
and opens and you're able to follow this path around keeping your head perfectly um in a forced uh, direction and then shifting it in towards it as this opens further and further a small crack becoming a larger chasm and then a, a hole wide enough for you to slip through and you can just make out what you think is the trail of your sister's dress vanishing through this interior if you wish you can push your hand out through it and follow your sister through Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm the whole time I'm going to be grasping for those the fingertips that I that were the last piece of my sister to slide through this painting and the wall and this house into another world and I'm going to be reaching for as tears fill my eyes and with the with the, uh, the blurriness from that from those tears it all opens up for me and sliding in gorgeous cool. it's been a very stressful evening it has <laughs> you reach out towards her and your hands are just able to find the contact of your sisters they wind through them and together the two wentworths vanish from this dimension into another and for a moment at least captain stone you're left here alone can you give me a sanity roll and then i want to know how you react to this I'm gonna, into gray. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a point uh, of, san, of sanity loss and yeah, yeah how do you point. respond to this that is a success though well that's not good you saw um, not one but two of the sisters vanished here uh, can I deny this can I deny that, that that was a magical portal and instead just like a crack in the wall that seems to uh, seems to have opened up Run a so hand along it, perhaps behind the painting. I mean, it really did seem when you were at the doorway leaving that it was just a, 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 a door that you'd missed. But standing here now staring directly at it, you can't really convince yourself otherwise. If you'd like to convince yourself otherwise, you could take several large steps backwards towards the garden. And then from there, yes, it, it does look rather like there was a doorway there. And... Perhaps if you return to the painting again, it will be there. You'll find the slip behind it or the switch which was thrown. Those Wentworths, they played games when, here when they were younger and they probably would know the corridors that might connect the house. But standing here now in front of the painting, rather hard to convince yourself of anything. The last remainder of it, if anything, is Miss Georgiana's ring, which she had placed carefully behind the painting, falls to the ground behind it clatters and rolls strangely towards your feet it's not perfectly circular anymore and when it clatters in front of your boot it's slightly oblong as if the gold around it has been stretched and enlarged slightly nice um i'll pick that up and with a mental reminder to to give it back to her when i find her but i think i mean someone mentioned like maybe this corridor was modified to give like a secret kind of trap door to a subterranean entrance and maybe that connects to the mausoleum so like i've got that awful spot hidden roll to, to you know not be able to find the portal again i think all i can do is go back to the original plan of hunting the monster in the garden perhaps okay. the mausoleum <laughs> and uh hope that everything works out all right um i'll well, have to get another lantern from the servants kind of yeah, quarters at the back there. Yeah, uh, Strap that onto my rifle and uh, sprint out into the night. Uh, I've, of Reverend Jennings and Captain Stone, which of you has the lower look? Uh, 40. I've spent none. Uh, 54. Okay, Captain Stone, could you please make a luck roll for me? Heck. Ooh. That's a success, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know okay. why I didn't give you the full thing, but yes, 30 under 40. As you as you return, as you pause to retrieve the the lantern, and just as you're stepping out, uh, Reverend Jennings, you enter into the corridor, and the two of you will meet uh, with time enough to discuss and adjust plans. As the two of you lock eyes, Captain Stone, you are at the doorway to the garden. At Reverend Jennings, you are coming in from the small parlor. It is as though you are leagues away, across a large field, and. Far enough that you would want to wave and shout to speak to one another. This corridor cannot exist inside the house. While you're in it alone or together in one place, you can kind of forget it, cast it from your minds. But here now you genuinely realize what a distance where you should be able to speak 
quietly or just talk at a normal volume now would require bellows to reach the other party. The two of your eyes meet, though. Oh, no. Uh, I think I, I will attempt to, like... <laughs> Sir, if you wouldn't mind. The, the, the Wentworth sisters fell into the wall. Uh, maybe the mausoleum. Um, I... I'm going to try and get the, the captain to stay where he is and I'm going to stride down the corridor and try and meet him on the other side to because I, I at this point I'm not trying to yell because that would carry him the doorway um, yeah. so I'm, I'm not too keen to to, to 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 like get any further in I'll stay where I am I'm not coming to meet you uh, Reverend Jennings you stride across the corridor and it takes you some time to reach the other side as you're closing the distance you can see Captain Stone is rather fidgety uh, he's also armed himself and procured a lantern and maybe like a cloak to warm himself in the cold. The door is propped open and outside in the night sky, you can see the stars, stars shining down on the mausoleum in the distance. By the time the two of you meet, Captain Stone, you found yourself counting the thunders of your racing heartbeat. Every moment that goes past, Miss Georgiana and Miss Emma have vanished somewhere into some small corridor, and Miss Elizabeth and George Potter are also missing. You're keenly aware of time passing mm -hmm. and the knowledge, yep. the private knowledge that you have that perhaps there is some monster stalking this area. This uh, simply will not do. The two of you meet in the uh, entrance to the garden. Uh, the, the, the went worse. They they fell into a hole. There's a hole in the in the wall, but I couldn't see it. It, it vanished. Perhaps connects to the mausoleum tunnels. I, I and the monster's still out there. I, I must go. Sir, I, Captain, I, I understand your desire to move quickly. However, um, we do have Lord Northlake on side currently. He's asked us to meet him in the library to organise a search party and. While I understand time is of the essence, if we work with Lord Northlake, I suspect we will do we will cause less harm to the family if we can work with Very them good. rather than jumping ahead of ourselves. Very good, Reverend, but I am ready to go now and I can handle myself uh, out there as I have before and they can catch up with me. As, as they can. In the meantime, I, I, I must bid farewell. I, I, I do not wish to discuss any further. Time is wasting. Captain, I think I'd probably say that to your back as you leave. Bye! I'm, I'm assuming at this point I'm not going to be able to convince you. Um, There's a monster to kill. You see Captain Stone stepping outside, and Reverend Jennings, you mentioned a keen listening skill. Could I get you to make a listen roll? Well, keen. See if the 50 50 goes my way this time. No, it does not. <laughs> Something a runs along the back of your distracted. neck, and it, you think you might hear something under it all, but nothing concrete. Action. Um, you see Captain Stone turn and, and stride out across the crunching gravel and into the gardens, rifle in one hand, balanced in the crook of his arm, and the lantern held high so that he can peer for any monsters that linger. What would you like to do? I mean, at this point, the good captain does not seem to be in, in the, the best of mind, soundest of mind, and uh, I think in this moment it it would be more irresponsible to leave the captain on his own than it would be to... Uh, I, I can make apologies and explain the situation if necessary later, but right now there's someone who is clearly distressed and apparently seeing things um potentially but does truly believe uh, truly seem to be distressed and is not willing to come back into the house so the most responsible thing to do is to go with at minimum to at least try and like prevent him from doing anything again that would be improper um we're going yeah. on a bear hunt. <laughs> we're going to catch a big a one. Big one. But we're um, very scared. Uh, <laughs> the Reverend uh, steals himself and steps out across this threshold, where whether it was safe or otherwise, and out into the gravel, quickly catches Captain Stone, and the two of you head into the gardens and make your way towards the mausoleum. 
uh, as you leave, the door stays open behind you, and Captain Stone, uh, and I think it was Miss Wentworth as well that possibly saw it, with the knowledge that something else has pushed its way through this area, splintered that lock, and plunged out and into the darkness. Uh, perhaps you want to find it, perhaps you don't. Um, we'll leave the two of you there as we return to the sisters who are currently squeezing between space. Um, Georgiana, as you slid through, it wasn't, from your perspective, you didn't feel yourself, like, lengthening and stretching out, but it's as though time is sort of slowing and you're pushing your way through cool black jelly. Um, you're kind of finding yourself almost instinctively finding little cracks and crevices that allow you to continue this push, winding your arm around it and contorting it in ways that truly shouldn't be possible. As you're doing this, and just as you're beginning to feel this cold begin to sort of break and the jelly giving way to some stale cellar air, uh, you feel something touch the very tips of your right hand. And as you look backwards, you see the pretty yellow dress of your younger sister, her eyes open wide as she reaches out towards you. She's found you in this invisible space, taken your arm and pushed through with you. I say, Emma, I'm kind of surprised. Does my voice sound normal? Can, can we talk in this space or? In this particular space, you, you can talk, but it's like echoey and distant. And although it comes from your mouth, your ears pick it up as someone else's far away. I probably stopped talking then and just squeeze your hand, mm -hmm. kind of realizing what I've done now. I'm, oh, this was a terrible idea. I've led us into a <laughs> disaster. Um, I, I hold your gaze for a minute, then maybe turn back my head and try and keep moving see if we can get out the other side of whatever this tunnel is okay um i'm gonna need both of you to make uh dexterity rolls Ooh. Squeeze your way through. i'm dexterous you are we should have let you go first famous last words though like really yeah. oh well done yeah. the sisters they know their way between a chasm <laughs> um you sort of wind yourself through this thing and eventually push your way through and out into the space on the other side where you appear is in a large black space. It is as if you're in a cellar, except high on the ceiling you can see dotted, peculiar and distant, unfamiliar stars that vanish into an endless horizon. There is ground here. It's not level, it's filled with crags and, and rocky little hillocks and mountains, and they uh, scatter all around you and in all sides so that you find yourself in the edge of Oh, sorry, like midway down a large bowl in what you could convince yourself is a far away space. Miss Georgiana, you're an avid reader and you've perhaps heard fantastical stories about faraway places, distant moons or other worlds, which though, you know, unfamiliar can support you and then take you on wondrous adventures. This is unfamiliar, but it doesn't feel nice. Um, there is in the center of the bowl, a large black obelisk. And at its front is a cold stone altar. Both of you are gonna need to make sanity rolls. And this is gonna factor in finding the gap, squeezing through it and arriving in this place. And then I'm gonna need Bam. immediately need spot hidden. Two. Okay. Okay. That's On a fair. failure, I'm going to ask you to take one point of sanity loss. And on... Oh, sorry, on a success, that's a point. And on a failure, you're going to take a D6. Oh, Yay. dear. I, I really feel like this is a... I, I, I get the impression that um, you've gotten a, a bit of a bit of crap in the past for being like the sister that is more less sensible and pulls us into trouble. But maybe makes I bad choices of, now. Yeah, well, maybe I, maybe it's always been me. Maybe I've always been the problem. <laughs> like, like, you wear the wrong dress, and we're all like, oh, it's you again. But then I like light fire or something. Yeah, you put us into a different world. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. 
So take those uh, hits mm -hmm. to your sanity, please. And then uh, I see a successful spot hidden from Miss Georgiana. Uh, Miss Emma, could you also give me... Oh, my oh. God. Okay. Uh, so... Uh, Miss Georgiana, you, uh, spot the, the, the surroundings, you spot the altar in the center. It's definitely the point of interest. The rest seems kind of barren. Uh, and, um, uh, you begin to sort of pick a way down towards this. As you do, with a success, you find that it's not just the stars that glimmer in this space. There's peculiar little motes of light that are dancing in the ground itself. Um... At first, you're kind of reminded of when you were walking through the corridor and you saw that sort of flicker of light, that illusion that brought you to this space. Sort of it's only in the edges and when you move, you can't see it anymore. Uh, but then you realize it's, it's something more concrete, something you're more familiar with. This is small um, crystals reflecting light from the distant stars above and from Miss Emma's lantern that she's carrying you. And as you crouch down to sort of push your hand into one of the sections, it's not gravel, actually, so you wouldn't put your hand in. It's hard, firm rock, but there are tiny little gemstones just laced within it. And reaching down, you're able to pluck out a small, unprocessed, uh, unrefined ruby about the size of your fingernail. Wow. It's not of remarkable quality, although you're not a jeweler yourself, but taking it and stepping up, you can see that there's portions of this all around. There's also signs of people working at this ground to probably retrieve said jewels. There's signs of pickaxe oh. strikes oh, or yeah, areas okay. where possibly even explosives have been applied. The ruby that you're holding is a small and imperfect specimen, but it's valuable all the same. I we racking racking my brains. Uh, mm. The the wealth of the North Lakes suddenly, yes. uh, yeah. You it tracks now. You turn to your sister, having like come to this conclusion. You hold the the gem aloft, and like like you know you're like well, I, perhaps I've found something. Uh, Miss Emma is not looking at you. She's looking over your shoulder at a silhouette that she spotted on the horizon of the bowl. It's a tall humanoid figure with arms that drop all the way down to the ground oh, no. below it. It has no head, and oh. with the light kind of pass behind it, you can't make out any sort of face, but you just catch a glimmer of white bone coming from its torso. The thing had frozen, and you only caught it with an extreme because it was standing so still, it seemed almost to be another of the rocks. As you're just kind of keeping eyes on it, frozen, terrified that if you blink and look away like a spider in the shower, it will vanish. And when your sister tries to get your attention, you see it slowly slink down and recede back onto the other side of the bowl, vanishing. Okay, it's going the, the other it, way It is going us. away from you. Okay. <laughs> Terrifying. Did you did you see that? The 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 gems that they're everywhere. No 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 the the thing the thing the thing with no head the thing with no head. Georgie the thing with no head. The 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 thing that was described the monster. Uh, check the, around. The, the thing with the thing with no head. It's on the other side of the of the of the of the valley. Oh. Okay. Uh. It did it back away. I think so, but Georgie has got no head. Yeah. Um. We we got to get back, or we got to get to a safe place here, and there doesn't look to be many safe places. Um, can we see the passage we took in? Is there like a hole that leads back? Yeah. Um. First of all, uh, Miss Wentworth, can I ask you to make a sound? Um, yep. And Which miss, I'm assuming that's the me, Miss Wentworth. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. That's ugly. You know what? You got it for context. Yeah, well that's done. another failure. Uh, that's just going to be a point because you only saw it in the distance and basically cool. silhouetted. Um, uh, seeing this thing closer, you expect it would be worse. Um, yes. You looking back, Georgiana, you can. You've kind of begun to get the hang of finding this slip now and you can just make it out. With time, you reckon you could catch it. You also think. With time, it will get wider and even easier to find. It is a matter of 
hours, nay, perhaps minutes, before this passage is not some secret thing and is instead an open doorway between these worlds and humans are not the only things that could walk through it. Mm. Well, we... Look, we, we, it's, 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 we, we, that obelisk in the center, it might have answers. We should, we should get to it and then back. I, I know, I know you don't, don't want to, but look, look, maybe, maybe you, you've got the lantern, stay right by the entrance so that we don't lose it. I'll go to the obelisk and, and you keep an eye out because you've spotted the thing before. No, don't go on your own. I, I, it's over there. It, it, it's on the rim of the bowl, right? The obelisk is in the center. Uh, I should have time to nip back. If you can't we... go alone. You can't go alone. We'll find the, we'll find the the portal again. I'm not letting you go alone. Okay. All right then. I'll grab your hand again, like holding it way too tight because I'm just mm-hmm. nervous myself. Um, and hitch up my dress slightly and start to trot through the the. The, um, one quick question, just because I'm throwing out random ideas here. There's no suggestion that, like, the ground, what we're walking through, uh, I know that a lot of pigments that were made with, like, old paints mm. used crushed up gemstones. Mm. We're not in the painting, are we? Like, I just, it just occurs to me as a thought as we're walking along. You, you can't, yeah, it did feel almost as though you stepped into the painting. Um, but it seems to be more a distant place. The painting wasn't a reflection of this, no. It's more sure. that this was behind it or on the other side. The painting's also a far more modern piece than the rest of the corridor. But cool. the good news is you can write that scenario now, James. <laughs> <laughs> and that's your idea. No one can take that from you. Um, uh, uh, so hand in hand, the two Wentworths uh, begin to descend down into the bowl. There's enough light to navigate by with the stars, distant though they are, casting down. Uh, and with the lantern, you'll be able to focus it and uh, is examine a, is the that ultimate. A ruby? Yeah, um, they're, they're everywhere here. I think they've been mined, which means that I doubt oh North, Lord Northlake would be using dynamite and pickaxes himself, which means he's probably brought. Well, teams in here. I think People. I walk. I think I'm gonna walk with the dynamite. I think the timing doesn't work out on that. I think it would yeah. just be pickaxe. I think no, it would just be true. manual work. Yeah, that's that's hmm. my. Uh, well, yeah, it's, it's just like manual work, yeah. but like if there's evidence of people mining it. Also, <clears throat> it, it, also it, it, the the family was known for gems, but they haven't traded them in at least a few generations. Yeah. So yeah. whatever happened here is likely. It's old. Assuming that that is true, to have happened much, much earlier in their in their ancestry. It's than, the foundation yeah. of their wealth, and now they're just landowners because that's all you need. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Life hack. Um, you leave possibly one of the small, like, yellow ribbons of Miss Emma's dress by the portal so that you can easily find it again, and then you make your way down into the bowl. Um, the uh, altar itself and the obelisk before altar, it, that's a new word. Yeah, the large black stone yeah. slab. Yeah, you're right. It. Maybe I didn't say the word altar. Oh, yeah, you're right. Sorry, no, I pictured... Yeah, my bad. No, I, either way, that word comes to mind. There is a <laughs> there is a large black obelisk, a single slab of carved rock, which is this like same like miserable black and grey as the rest of its space. Uh, it has no signs of gemstones, um, and you can see a huge crack that winds through it. Um, as you approach, you can just make out carvings that have been done all around the outside. Uh, the slab before it um, is this huge black stone uh, and has been well worn with age. There are runes that surround the outside of it. And at the top, you can see uh, a sort of a cakey layer of some different mineral. As you get closer and Miss Emma holds her lantern up higher, um, both of you are kind of paranoid with the idea that you're being watched and occasionally darting her head up to look at the perimeter of the bowl and see if oh, anything's I'm looking I'm fully down. not looking at this altar. I'm fully like head on a swivel looking for that thing. Well, with that in mind then, perhaps Emma, you pass the lantern across to Georgiana who's inspecting as you look backwards and swivel yeah, around. Just, just take that. Staring at the outside. Georgiana, it's you that will see that the layer of uh like strange sediment on top of the altar is flaked and brown as you reach a delicate nail across it to pick at it it gives easily 
and as you point the lantern and sort of crumble it, it turns to dust. Um, your expectation of this would be that this is long dried blood. Additionally, oh, wonderful. You see that around tell. the uh, the obelisk there are these sort of carnal prancing figures that have been carved into the stone. They sort of gallivant around the outside, taking hands with one another, and none of them are portrayed with heads. Instead, their rib cages break open to reveal oh small cherubic faces within that sort of grin with glee and sort of like open wide and happy babies warbles. Their hands are taken in one another and they're dancing around this large stone slab. The other oh, thing of note is, not. is carved into it. There is the, these are like weathered, those are weathered and worn as if aeons have passed and, and, and rubbed them down. Uh, so they aren't perfect. There's like chips broken and like faces are smoothed and, and a lot of um, faults. Uh, the What you see that is somewhat more legible is um, uh, what look to be carved uh, English or Roman symbols, Latin. Uh, there are a number of letters that have been carved into the rock in a handout that I'll share to you now. Oh, fantastic. And you should all be able to quick, see that. Quick question. Yeah. I was able... Did we, we met up after I uh, had dealt with the like lady? Yeah, we had a moment of Ooh. meeting up, or was that... Yes, you not? did. It was. I, I believe you did briefly. So then the idea of a big black stone slab potentially being an altar would pop into your mind because you would know about the confession note. Yeah. It references a black altar and yes. yeah. blood. Mm. Um, and then and for the context of the handout, scrawled uh, scrawls symbols, uh, JN1413, presumably James John Jacques Northlake, WN1513, RN1613, and then no more... A N seventeen thirteen. Arthur. Yeah. Alistair. No, oh, Alistair, Alistair. Yeah, and then Arthur killed himself. Yes. Oh, that's actually way clever. I was thinking, oh, as uh, in A N mid year. <laughs> uh, uh, Alistair but... Northlake, who was the yeah. one who killed himself uh, after after his son Thomas, I think, died. Uh... Wow. Yeah. Okay. His son had an accident, and Alistair Northlake. Sorry, Alistair Northlake had an accident, mm. e.g. built himself, um, after his son died, and that was in 1713. And that's 13, that was the last one. As well. That was the last one, and now it's... Um, Fantastic. They want and they said the no more, sacrifice. and it seems like, given the ages of the children who died, Elizabeth was skipped, and now problems are happening. She is older than they. They had not come out in society yet. The children, and then Elizabeth is out in society, so she was skipped, and now they're having issues. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's also just approaching the the hundred year mark, right? Like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it's, if he's it's saying just, no more. Yeah, and historically, the choice been has been made not to do this again. In yeah. September, in the the thirteenth year of each century, mm. uh, James, I'll ask you to make a, a punch out a quick sandy roll. Um, Sandy roll. As you look at all this cooked content, wow. hard success. You are okay. Um, uh, Miss Emma, uh, can you give me a spot hidden? Roll? Sure. You probably want to succeed that if that's all right, Alex. Nah. You uh, look damn. around. They, there are the edge of the bowl is not smooth. There's a number of hunched rocks and crooked shapes, and as you swing around you're certain some of them are not the same ones you saw before. You'll sort of focus the light on them, but they're just black silhouettes. There is no way to tell if they are boulders that you missed in this alien space or creatures now hunched and peering at you. Occasionally you also see glimmers, reflections from the gems laid across the land that look as though eyes peering down into you in the darkness and you have the distinct feeling you are slowly being surrounded as more and more of these things move their way to the edge of the hole. Georgie, we have to go. We have to go now. 
Yeah. Um, by the way... They I, weren't I, there before. I don't think they're rocks. I, we have to go now. I do the horror movie thing of, like, waiting too long to explain something while you're trying to get no, me... No, we've got to go. <laughs> There'll be and multiple I'm probably going to start things. taking a couple of steps so, back and... Yeah, I'll follow. <laughs> Pull her away and begin to, to turn, heading towards uh, the entrance. Uh, the descent seemed okay. You were doing it cautiously and you were focusing on the light. Now it's sort of swinging a little bit and you're beginning to get a bit of hustle going. You're moving as quickly as you can, bouncing slightly, and you're finding the rocks less forgiving than they seemed on your way down. Can I get both of you to make climb rolls, please? Oh, as suddenly you sort of slip slightly, we're scraping one of so your many knees. Clothes. Do you have any idea how many clothes we are wearing? We are wearing so much underwear. Yeah, this is ridiculous. <laughs> oh my I god, the Wedwear mine. sisters are good. <laughs> I'm good. Oh, um, God. Uh, Jim, you're going to take a D4 of damage, please. Oh, I, I lucked. I lucked. Oh, you, you want to lock it? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, you're sort of sliding and scrambling. We're, we're, we're light. We're nimble. We've been horseback riding. We've been hunting. We're, we've got this. We're you've fine. Also been we're like, used to navigating yeah, you've weird been, spaces in too many clothing. We're, you've been we're traveling good. with your family. You've been like on like rocky yeah. beaches and things. And now you're scrambling. And I think the two sisters find themselves in unison. Uh, Georgiana now with the lantern takes the lead as the sensible elder sister finding her way up the paths as Miss Emma, slightly more dexterous, dances behind her, pushing, pushing higher and scrambling along the blocks. Head on a swivel as you swear you see some of these shadows these boulders only when you're not looking slip down into the entrance of the bowl and begin to move around you foot after foot you place it racing up the edge until suddenly your lantern captures the faint yellow bow of miss emma's carefully placed uh ribbon and surely here surely somewhere you can find the portal but as your heart fills your mouth you find that it is not immediately apparent and for a moment it seems missing uh george georgie We'll find it. Just, Georgie, just, where is it? Just try to focus. Look, look past, uh, look past the, the air in front of you. I'm looking at the, the things. I'm looking at the things that are moving. I'm gonna need a spot hidden roll then from just Miss Georgiana. Oh. Um, uh, and you can take focus. a bonus dice as you have found this before. And you've got the lantern. Success, and then with the bonus die, you are going to need. Yeah. A hard success. I'm gonna need a hard success. I do not you have the luck. Do to not bring need that to like So as you begin to peek for it, you are sort of talking it through to Miss Emma, and you're certain that you could find it. You'd seen it before. That faint catch of much warmer light spilling through, and the hallway beyond. But for now, you can't hide it. Find it, Miss Emma. As you swell around, suddenly you see it. This wasn't just an illusion. You weren't tricking yourself. One of those boulders moves. It stands up on its height and you can catch the reflections of bone opening and you think you can see a cherubic little face in the center for just a second until the bone snapped down and suddenly you hear this <laughs> as something calls and another on the other side of the bowl above you <laughs> oh, answers and begins to scramble down the side, moving towards you. And for a moment, we're gonna Good leave time. the two sisters there. As we go back to Reverend Jennings and Captain Stone. You're out in the garden. It's a uh, cold night. Uh, Captain Stone, you've taken the lead and you have your gun nestled in the crook of your arm. Reverend Jennings, you're just behind. Uh, your eyes are caught on the mausoleum in the distance and already your hackles are raised because Captain Stone, you found several pieces of evidence that something has come through this way. One of the hedges has been like broken open somewhat as if something like low to the ground has forced its way through it rather than around it. Uh, you can see scrambled gravel in sections and uh, Reverend Jennings, you found at one point pausing what appeared to be a lady's shoe. Excellent, we're on the right trail. <laughs> right. Okay. Are we still um, picking our way toward the mausoleum? You are. Is there any? There, there are no contraindications. That Everything seems point the mausoleum. The right and point. if anything, as you've just as just now, we like re return to you as Captain Stone. You're like standing up on you've like mounted one of these small stone benches, and you're staring at the mausoleum. Reverend Jennings has just fished out a familiar looking shoe from underneath um the one of the bushes no sign of blood though captain stone you've held up a hand for silence as peering keenly you note that the mausoleum's doors appear to be open 
there's no light spilling out, and it's very hard to make out, but those would always be sealed. That's, uh, that's where the beast seems to be resting, or waiting, or feasting. Right. Uh, are you prepared to accompany me, Reverend, or would you like to stay outside and call for help should it be necessary? I, I think it, if, if there is a chance of, of injury or, or a, then, I, then I think I, I should at least be, well, near enough by to say I, I'm not, a, I'm not a medical professional, nor am I a fighter or any such thing, but, um, well, if, if, if someone needs to make a ruckus, I can't say I'm a particularly loud man either, but I'll do my best. That's all right if you come in with me. If you're coming in with me, we don't need to be loud. We must be quiet, and perhaps if you hold the light, that will give me the best chance to just lay the thing before it uh, has a chance. At a to... minimum, uh, well, uh, at, at a minimum, um, anyone in the line of the Lord's work is meant to be a beacon in places of darkness or a walking lamppost. I shall be, sir. Very good. Uh, I will perhaps... take the lantern and. and... I am not designed in any way, shape, or form for this particular anything. I'm designed for talking to people. <laughs> and and fine. Well, God. okay. But I spent all I spent all night out of my comfort zone, so you know, swings yeah. around about. <laughs> yeah. uh, I will stay slightly behind so that the oh, light yes. goes, but Please like do. it doesn't, so that you can you still have a little bit of like night vision. Which... Well, yeah, so I think maybe let's let's head in with the light off and see how much we can see, because there's no point in learning the thing until we actually need the light. That's what I think. Okay. Is this thing, I'm assuming that we've, we've grabbed something that's hooded, or like can be, yep. like without it turning off entirely, we can just cover it? Yeah. Um, if this if is, we... Yep. It's, a, it's a rich house. They've got the latest in they got the good lantern shit. technology. Can okay. I... Can I pause for a moment and listen? And just see if I can hear anything now out in the garden of like, you know, we we found a shoe. Uh, I don't know whether like looking around to see if they went in a different direction or anything is helpful, but just doing a like, if you don't mind a, a moment, Captain, before we proceed. And I just want to like listen carefully to see if I can pick anything up. Um, the, the Captain takes a moment to hood the lantern, check his weaponry, like unsheath the saber, make sure it's in its place military stuff. You can also clearly see, I don't want to speak for you, Jackson, do we see the captain slightly more comfortable than he was previously? Absolutely. 100% <laughs> more calm and collected than having all of those eyes stare at him in that, you know, enclosed space and not knowing the rules of engagement. This, he understands. You sneak up on someone and you shoot them before they shoot you. That he Oh, yeah. Like, lay the saber out in front of you, check your weaponry, make sure, you know, loosen the belt, everything's in, in prime fighting condition for yourself. As the Reverend Jennings cupping uh, your cross in one hand and the fallen shoe in another, you pause and try to listen over your own thundering heartbeat. I'll ask you to make another uh, listen roll. Well, I succeeded. Okay. I probably didn't want to hear whatever I'm about to hear, but I succeeded. Huzzah. <laughs> uh, you listen as carefully as you can. In the distance, you can just make out the sound of the party, and it's a bit far away now and sort of around uh, uh, bushes and things. You do not see the signs of another search party and exiting yet, so it seems as though you are the only two present at the moment. As you turn your attentions towards the mausoleum, you think you can hear scraping of something against stone from the other side. Something heavy dragging the, <laughs> of, the um, other side rock of against the rock. building? Or from Within. further in? Within. Okay. Um, I will relay that to the captain. Um, Very good. Just... Uh, uh, one more thing. Are... Reverend Jennings, you're, you, you've been probably in Maybe not this one, but in similar ones. These are not big buildings. They are uh, like 
room sized on the upper level, then they will go straight down into a small, basically like a wine cellar for corpses. So they will have sections to inter the dead. There aren't any like supporting rooms or anything. There's kind of nowhere to be. There aren't any other doors either. Once you're in, you're in and that door is yeah. open. A yeah. wine cellar for corpses. Um, I mean, I will, no, I will still relay, like, I can hear something, perhaps, perhaps there is a, 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 a I mean, because this goes underground, so perhaps there is a, a passageway beyond, um, Captain, you are clearly designed, comfortable with this line of work, um, just a, a reminder, um, and I, I hope this is not, uh, this is not meant to, in, in any kind of rude way, but, um, there is potentially people down there who are not combatants. Uh, so while I understand your your comment on uh, shooting before someone shoots you. People, um, we're, we're expecting a, a, a wolf or a beast of some kind. Well, if this shoe is any indication, we may also be expecting Miss Elizabeth. So Very perhaps good. a breath well, before you shoot whatever it is down there, just in case the figure you see first is not a monster and is in fact a, a woman. In that case, I'll, I'll need you, Reverend, to be ready with the light. Um, keep it covered until we need it, but if you do see a, a beast, uh, likely have finer, keener night vision than us, and so best not to use the lantern until we, use, until we need it, but when you do, try to aim it squarely in its eyes that you might blind it for a moment. I shall, just a be careful. Not everyone down there is necessarily an enemy. Understood. I'll have you all like to guide me. Let's kill a monster. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, you step back up. Uh, Captain Stone, are you arming the Reverend in any way, or? Ooh. Uh, I assumed that the Reverend would not partake in uh oh. in taking uh taking a life, but uh. Is there any evidence the contrary? I mean, I've got my sword and my rifle. You want a knife? I don't know. Pocket knife? I mean, I, d I don't think by, by nature of who I am, at most, potentially, I would have some kind of walking stick because yeah. everyone has a little walking cane. Um, whether walking or sticks not are in I this would... year. Whether they or not I would have it on me uh, was another thing entirely, because you wouldn't necessarily have one at a party. You would have it as you left to go for a walk around the gardens. Yeah, and this um, was a little impromptu. If you wanted to make a luck roll, you could see if you had, a uh, like, your cane with you. I, How heavy I is think... your cross? <laughs> not particularly. Um, it's a decorative. Probably not. Like it's probably made of wood. Yeah. Or, like, you know, probably quite a hard wood, but it'd be made of wood or, you know... Do you want to make, a, make a luck roll to see if you have a walking stick with you? Um, Just by chance. I mean, I can, but I, I gen, genuinely, I'm. I think. I think no. I think okay. I left quite quickly after, yeah. so I'm. I. I don't think I would have. I would not have thought to grab anything because also there would have been nothing next to the door. You also like intended to bring the, the captain back to me with, like. So I yeah. think if so, anything, you're kind of for a moment your hands like clench and you wish you had your walking stick laid by the door with your coat. But it's far too late to turn back now, and the only way is what forward. I have is a cross and an unwavering belief in God. Let's see how that. Let's see how that does for you. Let, yep. Look, I don't know if if yelling. As far as I'm concerned, if there is genuinely a devil or some kind of monstrosity down here, it's blasphemous, and God should be able to. God's. That's what he's there for. He's there to exercise demons. Well, God also Such. casts his hand through the people who do his work, and there stands <laughs> the captain, <laughs> ready to do his work. Genuinely, like, it it does feel a bit that in this place, the people have been, you know, the pieces are on the board, now you only need to move them. Um, the captain sheaths his sword, steps up, and as you uh, swirl your, uh, like, cloak around uh, the lantern to keep it hooded and allow your eyes to adjust in the dark, the only thing that light will pick up until it is opened again will be your cross against your chest. Um, the two of you oh, yeah. creep forward towards the mausoleum. Uh, would you both like to make stealth rolls for me? And as you move through the darkness and the quiet with this preparation, you can each take a bonus dice. 
You don't need to roll. You can also not take stealth rolls if you want to just. If you want to just go for it. Maybe you shouldn't have taken stealth roll. Yeah. Oh, this is just the attempt. This is moving quietly. I mean, I'm I'm not, but it's not bad. I'm I don't. I wasn't intending to. Okay. Yeah, I don't care if we're stealthy or not. I I'm think we're going... being quiet. I don't know that we're being stealthy. Okay. Uh. I don't think the Reven can succeed, but if I succeed, will that still help for 11 points of luck? It's okay. your your isolating yourselves here. It, it you are not. I'm you, going first. You are, but it one of you will. You are not stealth. You are not both uh, undetected. One of you has been detected if you fail this, or you know who knows what that will turn into. But I can get. I rolled 30 over 20. It's up to you guys. This oh, this is this is. One. You got a 41 over 20, Captain. I thought, the, I thought the three was mine. I wanted the three. <laughs> Sorry, that was mine. Um, no, let's leave it. Okay. It'll be the, fine. The two of you walk forward. It isn't like nerves that shakes you anymore. Captain Stone, you're as much in your element as you can be. And Reverend Jennings, you know, as I said, the, the motion is in play now. You just need to see it out. Uh, you walk forward almost... Not confident, but determined to see what is within. You arrive at the outside of the uh, family vault mausoleum that sits above the ground. It's one of those sort of like white marble little buildings with the steepled roof and some particularly apt phrase in Latin undoubtedly scrawled across it and symbols of the family's house. Uh, now that you know their history, making their wealth in jewels, you can see that woven throughout it, symbols of small hammers and uh, in their crest. Um, from inside, any sound of stone moving has quietened, and you would convince yourself that only the dead are within. There is a large set of heavy doors. There is a key in the lock that has turned it and forced it open. And then you can see a splintering where it looks as though it's been pushed in further by something else. There is then a set of dark stairs that go straight down into the black abyss and on the side of it a couple of like stone statues that follow it down into the darkness the light from the distant moon and stars will not follow you in here there is only black I'm gonna take that cake just 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 making sure that it the door can't be locked behind us so I'm gonna just take that cake um Wise. Yep. Or, you know, on the off chance, I do have to lock the door in a hurry behind us. I'm gonna have the key on me. You take the key. All right. Well, if we need the lantern, um, mostly covered, keep it uh, on the ground until we need to shine it into the beast's face. Uh, am I able to, like... Are we able to have it in such a way that the lantern light is, like, dim and at our feet, so we can at least, like, see the stairs in front of us, or is it essentially open or not? They've got the latest in, in lantern you, technology. You can dim it and focus it at your feet. Truth be told, this is such a small area that once the light's out, it's kind of out. But certainly thematically, it's, it's, it's tight close. What this would do is nothing from outside would see the light from inside the mausoleum yet, at least. Um, but it's not, a, it's it's like a single room, you know, like even a torch at your feet. If you're in the room, you're going to see the torch. Um, Sorry, did I hear there were stairs? Yeah, there are yes. stairs going straight down into the darkness. There's nothing That's really, it's like the door opens and it goes straight down. There's no like inside. That's the plan. Yeah. Okay. And I'm, I'm suggesting that we have enough light to see the stairs so we don't break our necks, but not Just so much so. light that we alert the house. Okay. You, so. Which is essentially what we're saying is like, any light will alert people within but we can stop it being like an obvious thing that we're doing from the house, yeah. so we're not. Like... But I'm thinking of the. I'm thinking of the the, the, the blind strategy. Blind yeah. strategy. Keep it dim. Keep it low until it's. And then, and then that that will have. So, yep, that's a good idea. Okay, so Reverend Jennings, I imagine you're going down second with the light out yes. and focus at your feet, both hands holding it. Captain Stone, how are you arming yourself? You are aware that your gun has one good shot, sir. Uh, and also, in close quarters, will not be quite so, uh, you know, could be a bit unwieldy. Do you wish That's to it. wield it or your saber? Oh, definitely start with the rifle. 
because the, the 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 entire plan is to see the the thing before it sees us, uh, blind it, get one good shot off, and then anything more is required. Now comes the saber. Hell yeah, kicks ass. All right, you hold the rifle out and pointing it square in front of you, nestled in your shoulder. You begin to step down the stairs. Uh, so. I would like from one of you a spot hidden roll and one of you a listen. I imagine Captain Stone at the four could make a spot hidden roll and Reverend Jennings walking behind could make a listen as you keep an ear out for things within and things beyond. This plane is already falling apart thanks to my dice Hell yeah. Oh. Okay. You both, like one foot at a time, make your way down the stairs. They've been worn smooth with the passage of endless mourners coming to visit uh the north lakes over years and years the centuries that have passed and as you go down further the light folks in the pool beyond you eventually emerge into a small inner sanctum a room within interred beneath uh down here you can see that there's a number of um bucks along the walls where bodies have been uh, buried and sort of pushed inside them there's also a number of statues tied slightly in the shadows uh, as you go in and begin to sort of sweep the light around slightly, Captain Stone sort of like moves around, sweeping, tipping one back to the wall and sweeping his gun across all the sections to see what he can find inside. Um, there are, in the center of the ground, there are two um, stone plinths on which rest the coffins of Robert Northlake and Isabella Northlake. And then set into the walls, there's uh, niches that have the ossuaries of other family members. As you go inside, Reverend Jennings, uh, you hear very faint, um, on the edge of your hearing, only when there's a pause, the sound of heavily muffled, terrified breathing from, on a hard, you believe, two figures inside the coffin, where you can see the heavy slab has been shifted across and then move back into place. But it is now, it has been dragged again. It's partially open, so you can just make out the sounds coming from within. As you sweep the gun across Captain Stone, Reverend oh, Jennings- the center coffin, sorry? Yeah, one of the two center ones. It'd be uh, Robert Northlakes has been open slightly, and you can see like scratches along it on the outside a little bit. Uh, and you can hear um, scared breathing from inside. Captain Stone, as you sweep your gun across, training it on the outside, trying to look for something. Reverend Jennings turns to look at you and one of the statues, for a moment, this small cherubic face up against the wall suddenly blinks and then you can see the long arms just behind it crawled around as suddenly <laughs> lunges forward and tries to wrap its arms around you from behind. You are going to be surprised. Uh, Reverend Jennings, you catch it just in time to not be. So we're going to go to dexterity order. Uh, what is everyone's dex? 50. Okay. Um, uh, the creature is going to go before you. 70. Okay. Uh, your creature is going to go first for this one, Captain Stone, and then you are going to be able to act after. As this thing lunges forwards towards you, it attempts to wrap its arms around you, and then the sort of like wide bones that uh, surround its torso, you can feel squeeze into your back. It's come from behind you. Oh. Um, and and uh, crush. Uh, it is going to make an attack with a bonus dice. Would you like to dodge or repost? Uh... Uh, if I've got time to get my saber out, not in, not in this, not in this circumstance. Sorry. Uh, I don't want to use my one good shot if I get the impression that it's, that it's made of stone. It no, you're like, not getting the impression of the main shot. It was just you saw the cherubic little face. Gone. Uh, no, you wouldn't oh. be repulsing with a bang. You'd be just butting it in the head with basically an improvised weapon. That's fine. Let's or do that. Like uh, I think club. so. It's gonna be fighting brawl. Be? Brawl. Well, okay. So my brawl uh, and my dodge are the same. But my dodge wins a tie. Um, if I dodge, I'll go for a brawl. Let's see what happens. Right, let's let's get a feel for this thing. Go ahead and roll your dice ball first, and then that will be uh, you can. Then you have the option to to lock it. Where, where's my fighting brawl skill? There it is. Ooh. A success. I will keep that success. Okay. This thing has a Make bonus dice. Hard because you were oh. gonna. Yeah. Yeah, but it might miss. Bonus and like. Oh, it's got a bonus die. Um, yep, go on. 13 points to lock. Make it a okay. hard. That is a is hard all, success as the captain whirls around, 
military instinct cutting in and the thing lunges. Uh, that is its first roll and then it has a bonus dice. And on a 54, that is a 54. regular success, but not a hard 10 potential points of damage as this oh. thing's huge claws rake across your back, but they catch only fabric as the captain slips down and away, slamming the butt of his gun into the small face and sending it recoiling as the like ribcage snaps back in front of it for a moment away from you. That is, I believe, three points of damage. Yeah, if I can keep the three, I'll keep three. Um, you notice that uh, it's uh, it has some armor, so that is somewhat reduced. Um, but the thing recoils, and I am need, going to need both of you to make sanity rolls for me as you see this thing in its full. Uh, the demon, seen by Lady Lydia, described in the distant, otherworldly uh, carvings, and now here in the morgue. All right, those yeah, are good numbers. Uh, that's going to be a D8 for each of you. Oh, oh my god. My. Catastrophe. <laughs> Just one? Oh, oh, thank God. I was ready. That's not bad for each of you. It's pretty good. All things considered. Okay. All right. Any reputation hit as well, or? Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this thing's reputation is awful. It just lunged at you, and it broke into the mausoleum. That's messed up. How rude. Um, okay. Uh, we're going to go now to uh, Captain Stone's turn, uh, as it's it's kind of gotten its, its little smack at you. Um, and, uh, yeah, you, it, what, what would you like to do? I'd like to let off my one good shot. Okay. Uh, so, Reverend Jennings, we'll say you've got a chance to get the light up. Not to blind it, but enough light on it that I'm not imposing a penalty dice for the darkness. However, I am imposing a penalty dice for the close proximity of this thing and its active lunging towards you. Mm. This is not exactly what the rifle was designed for, but... You can That's use true. your turn to try and reposition. However, know that it will either go for you and close that distance immediately again, or it will go for Reverend mm. Jennings. Yeah, no, or possibly think, uh, the tasty little morsels entombed yum, before yum, it. Yum, yum, yum. You know what? I should pull my saber out now. I've got the penalty die. You could, you could chuck the gun. That's what it. I'll do. You could just. Do you want to just drop the gun so that Reverend James could possibly get to it, or are you sort of slinging it on a harness across your back? Yeah, no, I'll hold on to it. Let's, okay. just, let's sling it on the harness. Yes, of course. That's what I was thinking of. The harness that I have. For okay. Sure. I think I the harness and. Pull the saber out. Hell yeah, you drop the hardest, draw the saber, and <laughs> let Roy, you go, Napoleon, you dog. <laughs> <laughs> Here you he is. Oh! Devils before. oh my god. Oh my. Holy I'm shit, crit. dude. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> wait. No, it's gonna crit. Hold on. That. Holy shit. But I seem to have crit it. Bro, big so numbers. Big numbers. Roll a D8 again, because that's an impaling weapon. Oh my. And that's gonna ignore okay. its armor. No, I think. I think that it is that extreme damage is the eight. Yeah, then but it, plus then, the damage. It, oh, the plus one is the is the okay. So it has rolled. So it. it's damage is two, extreme damage is eight. You are right. Oh, no, uh, I think. No, 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 no. It hasn't. Right, it's a, it's a D eight plus one weapon that it hasn't rolled it. Oh my god! So it hasn't factored in build either. Or maybe you just roll the damn. The, it should if be. If you hover over it, it says it's rolled eight plus one. Rolling eight plus one. So it has rolled something. So eight, eight plus one, it's, it's an impaling weapon, so you should roll another D8, and you should additionally roll your damage bonus if you yeah. need you have it. Roll, 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 roll an additional D8. Roll an additional D8. Uh, no the, such damage bonus. The weapon is a D8 right. plus one. It hasn't factored Correct. in an extra D8. Yeah. Uh, I thought you just got max damage on impaling. Uh, impaling, no, 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 impaling weapons, weapons roll their damage dice as well. Oh, oh okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's different. Okay, different to guns. I understand now. That's how I was I'm yep. confused, but I'll gladly do another D8 I, I, when I When I put it on your couch, I didn't take the impaling thing. Okay. Bop. That's 14 damage. Piercing yeah, armor right. on the thing. That is enough to kill the thing with one with one oh, deadly strike. You, Captain Stone. Captain Stone, I, I I lay this in your hands. Uh describe the scene. Holy shit. Uh, it can lunge at me and it can keep on lunging at me, and it lunges at me straight through my saber as we kind of meet halfway. And it's it's claws, I presume. Yeah. Kind of scraggling at me, kind of as I'm leaving back, just out of reach as it slowly slips down the blade towards me. Uh, I've kebabbed it. Has Holy anyone... shit! Fantastic. Find a find just, an edge between the rib caves and plunge straight through the face secured oh. within and out the other side, pinning it to the wall behind. Uh, uh. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> 
just immediately my brain went, has anyone seen Chicago? He ran into my nap. nap. He ran into my nap <laughs> nap. Ten, times. 10 times. Fully just that. <laughs> he ran into my F1 D8 plus one plus eight. <laughs> <laughs> Impaling oh, time. Man. Holy shit, dude. Big numbers. <sighs> yeah. I, I, was, I, I may have just broken the scenario. It turns out all you need is a crit at the right time, no matter what your dice are. Well, there were a look, lot of if there things. was one of these things, it would be particularly uh, dangerous, yeah. fortunately for that's me, right. at least. So that's Actually, good. although that Captain that Stone's probably fairly satisfied with himself. Um, okay, uh, you People run this- body, you've proven a beast. <laughs> you run yeah, this true. thing through, and as it falls to the ground, it doesn't disperse into ectoplasm. There is the corpse of a monster laid in the mortuary, or more, whatever the hell this thing is, of the North Lake family. You also, Mausoleum, thank you. Uh, you also see, you can also hear the, the shadow breathing of the two people hidden inside the, uh, the forgetting oh, yeah. grave words. Coffin. I'm, uh, the coffin. coffin. I'm going to immediately, like, not, like, I'm flabbergasted, but I was next to act and was, at this point, I'm going to say, Captain, help me get this open, and turn to the coffin and try and push it, because I don't think that with just me, I'm going to be strong. I'm not not strong, but trying to move a, a stone lid is probably going to take a bit of... It's um, And then as as we're doing that, I'd like to say, Miss Elizabeth, Miss, Miss Elizabeth, are you in there? Yes, 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 Reverend, we're in here! Uh... With the two of you pushing against it, you can get it. It is very heavy. It's not impossible, though, and you can get it moving. Um, you shove it across to the side, and uh, you see within uh, Miss Elizabeth Northlake, Mr. George Potterton, both hidden uh, from the monster above, and also the long, like, it would have been wrapped in something, but the corpse of their uh, Miss Elizabeth's ancestor uh, laid within as well. As you reach in a... a Actually, you've rolled pretty well on your sanity. Probably not even a shaking hand. Uh, actually, you did fail, and it was... Yeah, like, you, you, you take hers and draw her out from it, and Mr. Potterton heads out as well. Miss Elizabeth looks terrified. Her dress is scratched and and and, and uh, scraggly. Um, she's lost one shoe, and she's whirling around the room. Mr. Potterton looks worse. His hair is completely askew. He looks honestly in, like, deep shock. Like, he's just not even comprehending. And as you come out, he goes, Yes, Everend, right the... Well, it's nice to see you. Uh, and sort of, like, has is helped out and says, Walk in the garden, it was then. <laughs> and then uh, looks at the monster on the ground and just... Vomits into the corner. Very good. Um, I, would, uh, I would like to hand Miss Elizabeth back her shoe. You did say I picked it up. Uh, and at, at a minimum, I probably would have used that as a weapon if I needed to. I would have yeeted a shoe at someone. Uh, but I'm going to hand it back to her and say, um, Madam, your your uh, your your family, your, your father and mother are quite worried. Can we? Uh, would you? Can we accompany you back to the house? Yes, I think Reverend Captain Stone. Thank you so much. I rather think something peculiar is happening. I rather think I agree with you, ma'am. Uh, however. Now is probably not the time to discuss the peculiarities of a monster in your family's mausoleum. I think we best do that with your family back at the house. No, perhaps that's... Yes, perhaps that's right. I rather think mother and father are going to have a hard time understanding what's happened. I rather think at least your father, ma'am, may not. But that is a conversation for a moment. Uh, perhaps yes. we enter from... The front of the house, uh, Sergeant, um, Captain? Or uh, I, I, the hall yes. doesn't, there's no entrance from the hall. Actually, there's I a... am going to suggest we use the servants' corridors. Yes. Yes, I think that um, would be, I think that would be appropriate. Um, we can, uh, find you a, I'm going to, because I've got my, like, I do have a jacket. I am going to take that off and put it around her because she is quite clearly, like, in shock and I want to keep her warm. Or if, actually, I will take, not mine, I will take the coat that was on the lantern which uh, and put that on her because that is not improper um, because that was already off. And we'll, uh, Captain, would you be so kind as to accompany Mr. Potterton? I, I will provide a, a support for Miss Elizabeth. We will take the servants' quarters uh, in the hope that we can potentially get... Um, 
the Lord and Lady North Lake its attention with it without uh, inconveniencing any other guests. Quite right. But we should stick Voice is together. fully just cracking slightly, doing um, his best. Um, uh, Lady uh, Miss Miss Elizabeth will, will take your arm, and I think she will also take the moment to thank George Potterton for escorting her through the gardens. And you do get the impression that although he is having a bad time, he mm. did handle himself relatively admirably. He didn't flee, and when they were retrieved from the coffin, he was doing some semblance of protecting. He genuinely would go like, you're a young guy, well done enough for a society person thrust into a very, uh, a circumstance you weren't exactly prepared for. He is now fully losing his guts on the floor and basically mm. incoherent, but he kind That's of held fine. it together as long as he had to. Um, he's now pretty much there is a there is a mental note to reassure the young man in the future, <laughs> but right now I'm reassuring the young lady That's... because she's the one, at least in the mind of society at the time, more likely to faint, and then we have to carry someone. 100%. So let's try not to have any fainting. Let's try not to have any hysteria right now. The gentleman a, will a manage himself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and we'll, we'll uh, head back to the house, and if we get there without incidents it will be the servants corridor that we enter well, through uh, trying to keep out of sight i, I should uh, like to take the corpse of the beast for later identification sure. is it so, is it small is it no. like, is, is it little i think it's we it's, 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 a, it's about man sized it's like okay. it, it's not huge actually when it has it it's got kind of like orangutan arms so they go way up high but when it with it now laid out on the ground slumped over it's like quite Airy on the outside, these long, like, uh, like three-fingered claw limbs, sort of like curled up around it. It looks kind of like a, a, a an orangutan that escaped the zoo or something, with it on its face, like with the the mm -hmm. torso obscured. Um, it's 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 size fifty. It's about human sized, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I would... Would, it, would it be an imposition? Uh, you're probably not I carrying. As long as you can get Mr. Potterton to walk himself and not faint, you can you can you can get it, Captain Stone. Yep. Um It is a I would suggest we probably don't want to bring it into the house. Not into the house, just uh just to the edge, just maybe to the quarters and cover it up. Just uh just I I just, I just want people to see this thing. No no I I understand. Um in in that case, um Captain to ensure that this doesn't go missing or such, would you be willing to remain near the, the entity uh, or uh, until we find such like someone else? Essentially, I'm just thinking like, you know, it decomposes or rapidly or like someone like another one comes out and removes it. We do want some kind of proof. So I yeah, I want to keep it with it. I think let's let's all sit together and I'll carry um, this thing back. Miss, or what, or what, one thing Miss Elizabeth will say is um, there's empty graves. There's empty ossuaries. We could inter it. It feels rather... It doesn't seem like the kind of creature that your family would want resting alongside no, but your ancestors. Captain Stone, as brave as as much bravery as you have shown, I don't think anyone should be outside alone tonight. Mr. Potterton looks at it and goes, that'll be a fairly fetching rug. <laughs> um, a pair of shoe. No, I think I, if we can all get back sticking together with this thing in tow, I that's mean, what if we, we should can... do. Look, if we can put it in the coffin that those two got out of, I know that's... Or if there is an empty one There are that empty is easy one. To... Uh, you know there's... Okay, uh, actually, Reverend Jennings, uh, on that thought and casting around, Miss Elizabeth has a bit of insight into this as well, and it's... I'm going to assume that all of the, all of the children that went... That died yeah. do not in fact do their, not their coffins have are corpses. Empty. They they yeah. are they are empty. I uh, put empty. that one together about thirty minutes ago. There you go. <laughs> uh, yes. I like that one out. Those ones are yeah. those ones are empty. There's there's no bodies to go. Right? Uh, cherubic really, faces. Do they have a yeah, certain familiar we, resemblance? I don't know. <laughs> so two things that make me think this is probably not the worst idea. Um, that thing based on the fact that 
the two of them ran into the mausoleum and closed themselves in a coffin. I do not believe this thing came from here. I believe this thing came from outside the mausoleum and entered it. Hmm. So it's not like another one of these could enter through the mausoleum and take the body, which is what I am thinking about from a, like, we want to make sure there's proof. So having it be enclosed here for a short period of time may be viable. Um, it's also Any away problems? from the rest of the family, away from the house, so less likely to be seen by people and terrify them. But I'm also happy if we want to take it back. I just, yeah, interring it, I don't think that's the worst idea. Um, but if you're insistent on bringing it back with us, then I will I will acquiesce. I would like to take it back with us okay. because uh, everyone is a bit dark on me. Pick that up at least. And so if at least this I is back carrying the monster. I will say, you know, this is very it. unlikely to make... This is going to be such a scandal. Like, Captain, so probably in your head you are a bit like, well, I was right and I've solved the problem. Yeah. Reverend Jennings, you are aware if he brings the monster into the party... He will never see polite society again. <laughs> I just I mean, want to get it to the house. I know, but even like, yeah. Oh, I agree. Or, and and, late, and Miss Elizabeth is is on your side, and you have saved it. Like they're all they're very referring. This is still like the absurd nature of this setting. This could still work out worse for you. <laughs> you know, no, like, yeah, you're right. All right, well, no, yep. I'll maybe, take my maybe the best. Maybe the best option is that you saw them being set upon by a beast and you it wounded it terribly up. and it dashed off where it will surely pass uh, and everyone's very clap, clap, clap and they can justify that indeed something was seen and you've saved everybody. It's okay. Elizabeth knows what happened. That'll be enough for me. I'll take my orders. If Miss the, Elizabeth also is not against here, taking it. Fine. It's just don't, like, it, like as long as it's kept nearby. She also is immensely curious about the thing and also she's beginning to put I'm... together that this might have something to do with the corridor. I'm going to make a... Because we are planning to enter via the servant's corridor. Now, that is still close to the house. I note on the layout that there is a laundry slash outhouse, which does appear to have a door. Yep. Um, I don't know whether that there is any entrance from the laundry outhouse into the house itself, but potentially taking that and putting it there at Put least with the contains it without it being... That's what I had in mind. Yeah. I, yeah. And then, Just like yeah, take it back the idea to the is house, not necessarily but... to take it into the house. Exactly like, so. It's okay. maybe to take it into, like, an area of the house that only servants are in because their job is to keep the fuck quiet. My thought, um, exactly. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. All right. Um, so Captain Stone hoists up the monstrosity and the most natural position for you to carry it is with it sort of, like, almost cradled in your arms as you knit your hands in front of you to hold it in place with it this close to your nose you catch this ungodly stench coming from its like cavity chest and the face within it's like just rotting meat and 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 long disturbed matter it's it's foul its fur is matted and gross clotted with sort of excrement and 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 meat it's little face now that it's sort of chipped open you see it's not a perfect cherubic statue or anything it's a it's a gross organ that displays facial similarities that was you know the the mind trying to understand what it couldn't this thing isn't human there's only approximate similarities to it um and with its little face completely skewered and drawn open you can see this weeping out sort of like yellowy pus and, and matter it is a disgusting and foul creature um and you it's of, mine and it's all <laughs> yours um uh uh reverend james takes uh, miss elizabeth's hand and uh george sort of stumbles a little bit behind you and walks out occasionally uh muttering a uh, little nonsensical sayings to himself he seems fairly out of it and the two of you the four of you four of you and your new rug make your way back <laughs> towards the uh the laundry outhouse and the north lake estate oh heck while yeah. we were down there did we see any subterranean tunnels that, can, that went back in the direction of the house where the wentworths may have fallen uh do you want to make do you want to spend some time making heck. a spot hidden roll point this is going to be taking time just flagging that up the so front. i i i would Before recommend well, let's get these people back. We get Press. them yep, back, yep, and yep. then again then with the like blessing of the of the North Lakes, we can absolutely do more. more Very good digging. Um, I'm also still pretty convinced that you have just kind of hallucinated. Although I am concerned about the fact that the two do not seem to be nearby, but I might, in the back of my head, assume that they are out in the garden 
like they're just or they're somewhere else in the house like i, I i'm not sure it's just appearing into a wall is impossible not Impolite. possible yeah. <laughs> um, lose one reputation for dis for doing magic um okay uh you hoist all things and head back towards it. you can do a, a cursory just in case you go miss georgiana miss emma Nope, no, no response. It's and there's right. no there's no visible passage it's down. Okay. Um can I suggest that if we can deposit this thing in the outhouse, um, but then we still will. make our way back, I would like to bring Miss Elizabeth and Mr. Pottington into the kitchen because it's warm mm -hmm. and there's activity, and then I would like to get the servants yeah, to staff fetch can go and fetch, yeah. Lord Northlake, so that this can all happen out of the eyeline of any guests, essentially. A hundred percent. It wouldn't be unreasonable for the, the the host, the head of the house, to go and speak to the kitchens. You know that that's not unusual. Um, to like if, if something needed to be prepared, it's for odd, yep. but it's no, not unusual. Totally it's reasonable. not impossible. All right, we will. That's my plan to we'll... be proper. Sounds good. We'll park the two of you there, returning uh, the corpse and two very scared um, young adults to the kitchens. As we return to a distant place, a distant Where two and very troubled young place. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, returning to this distant uh, land, Miss Georgiana, you've just cast your eyes around and tried to find the vacuum and, and found it missing. Uh, Miss Emma, you have spotted one of these creatures rising up, call out and answered by another as they begin to scrape their way down the side and head towards the two of you uh you are being flanked and uh in time you will hear other calls as well uh there is not just uh two um what would the two of you like to do there's no time there's no time we, we need to find that we've got to find the it's it's okay it's just a trick it's a matter of light um can I plunge my hand into the pocket of my dress and pull out that ruby and raise it to my eye like a monocle, trying to get like fractal light to hit oh. it to see if I can pick up the the? Yeah, I'm. Can I push the roll? Yeah. And try it again. Absolutely, yeah. you can. You still have a bonus dice, um, Miss. So before you roll this, uh, Miss Emma, you can yeah. assist this. You can turn, and the two of you throw yourself wholeheartedly into this effort. It will mean turning your back on the things that are approaching. So you can give Miss Georgiana a, another bonus size. Note that on this push, you will not be able to like the roll. You will need to roll an organic hard success. Yep. The yep. other option is that you might, if, if they are climbing up a slope towards us, they're going down. They're steep. going down into the bowl ah. halfway. They're, you are halfway oh, well, up the bowl. They're now. We're about halfway up. Yeah. Some of them are coming from the other sides. So they'll need to scramble around the circumference or dart mm -hmm. across the altar. But um, yeah. How close are they? Like. Close? No, not yet. They they seem to be they seem to be gathering. These okay, things yeah, seem to I'll, be unwilling to take a fair fight. One's called okay. out to another, and they're now just beginning to skitter around. They yeah, are basically. It turns out they're weak as heck and can get stabbed once and die. So, yeah. <laughs> we got from your perspective, you're not really thinking that. From from down here, no, they're looking pretty no. fucking big. <laughs> it look they look pretty bad. It looks pretty bad. I'm gonna yeah, I'll turn around and help my sister because it seems like she's not finding it, and I really need her to uh, find it now. Yeah. What's your spot hidden, just in case you might be? Oh, not great. It's 25. Okay, I'm doing it. <laughs> Mine's yeah. not great. Either. Okay, Jim, you're gonna roll. You're pushing this roll. You're gonna roll a spot hit and uh, test, and then you're gonna roll two bonus dice. We'll do them one at a time for as much dramatic effect as you can muster. The first. Okay. First of all, uh, it's the, the the pull out the ruby and have a look through that. Uh, glancing it. Uh, nothing. Nothing. No. No. Put that down. Start to frantically look. Uh, just myself. We saw it before. I, I checked the ribbons location. That is also oh. terrible. Uh, and then Jesus. just Emma's help. Can you spot it? Ah, no, no a success, but not a hard success. A regular success. You begin to reach out towards it, trying to find this gap. At first, methodically, as you were taught yourself to do through as close a science as this age can muster, and then desperately, flinging pieces of sort of gravel around you just try and feel through for it you think you catch oh. it a couple times it actually unfortunately 
it's your anxiety, it's your sort of speed that causes you to lose the edge of it and desperately try to find it again. You sort of begin to catch edges and you can see sort of flashes of that, uh, that yellow light coming through from the other side, once, twice, only on the edge. And then finally you do begin to see it as it is continuing to widen and you're sort of trying to squeeze your way through. But by that time, they've fallen upon you. And Miss Emma, I'm gonna make an attack against you that you are going, you can dodge a repost, but it's gonna have a penalty dice. As you turned away from them and they're going to try and Can lunge. I see that my sister's found the edge of the, can I see that my sister's found the edge of the hole? Cause I did yes. turn around to and help. She, yes, and she's beginning to draw you towards it, but it's the timing of the thing. Can I make a, can I make an executive decision to, to, to use my turn to push her in? You can't. Oh, no. <laughs> Okay. I'm going to do that then. Georgiana, you... I'm not dodging or reposting. I'm, I'm going to push my sister through. You find just the edge of it, the very sort of corner, and you begin to try and twist yourself out. You don't want to look back because you can't risk losing this angle. You just reach out a hand to take your younger sister so that you can draw her through. When you see her hand rest on your shoulder for a moment comforting and then a shove as you're twisted oh. through this space and you look back no just time. as three or four of these creatures fall upon her and then whoosh, you are drawn through the other side and tumble out into the long corridor immediately lunging up and trying to find the entrance you can't find it for a second and miss emma is momentarily lost oh heck and no time. We're that out of time. is where we're gonna leave this session yeah, you would, wouldn't you? Oh, wonderful. Oh, boy. Absolutely. Oh, boy. Very, very cool. <laughs> I mean, if if, uh, if, the, if the good reverend and Miss Georgiana weren't already vaguely kind of uh, similar in their in their interests, etc., uh, we might just find out why the reverend's real sad if this goes <laughs> the way it might. Hmm. Mm. Holy shit. All right. Well, uh, that is where we're going to leave this session and we will pick back up next week uh, for more longer <laughs> corridor. No. <laughs> for the longer, for the long <laughs> corridor. It's too Amazing. long. It is too, too long. long. It is actually a fully cursed corridor. Um, all right. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in and uh, and uh, enjoying this with us, and thank you to my uh, tremendous cast for playing. Um, thank you for keeping. Thank you. Uh, we will uh, park this here, and we will be back. Uh, I believe still same time next week, or maybe that's when the it depends where you one are. One further week, technically. I, I think, think it's and then it, we're going to come out goes. in daylight savings. Depending on where you are in the world, you might be about to go into daylight savings, but we're always fixed at ten a.m. Melbourne time. That's right. I have checked daylight savings in a big bold calendar thing on the seventh. So I think we have another week before it doesn't that it doesn't change in the. Yeah, here we go. RQ staff and Skype. Next week it's the same oh. time as this week. After that, who knows? <laughs> Which is exactly <laughs> right. Blah. I believe that daylight saving, if it's the same here as it, it like in the US as it is here, then it will change on the Sunday, which means because we run on a Friday slash Saturday, it's not going to impact next week, even though it is changing for them next week. But Meddling the following with week will be dark at any rate. Happy are... time zones. <laughs> yeah. yeah, look, happy, happy Eldritch happy monstrosity. Happy all of the above. All right. Just happy. Yeah, just happy. Happy. All right. Just happy. happy. Hope we'll see you all soon. And uh, yeah. Bye. Catch you the next one.